Jim Owen here. going to show you how I put together this, what I call the ultimate horse bike. It's a bucking horse. It has legs that gallop in relation to the motion like a horse would, uh, connected to the wheels with cranks. And we have a sound device for making uh, the clopping sound of the uh, hoofs of the horse. And also uh, a whinny and neigh sound box on the unit. So let's get going showing you how it's made in case you ever want to make one. There's a few tools you might need like a drill press, a lathe, a welding outfit and hand tools and a little knowledge. Here we go. In converting the front axle and wheel uh, this I think was about the easiest part of it. I used a BMX type fork. I cut off the uh, little projection that had the uh, axle mount on it, but I had to braise on a bracket to hold the uh, brake on. I put a disc brake on it. Now what was nice and easy about this, uh, let me take this apart and show you here. Two screws are what hold it into the fork. And with this type of bearing assembly from a unicycle, there as you can see this is uh, an easy thing it just happens to fit right inside the fork all that was required was drilling a hole through the front of the fork and tapping it into here now I had to do a little adjustment on here and make a little spacer to space the uh, disc disc brake rotor away from the side of the, uh, the spokes. Now this is a standard unicycle hub. But what I had to do now, since it's offset, uh, set that axle up in my uh, fixture where I calculate the spoke lengths because of course they're all a different length. Now this is a 24 inch rim and this is a 26 inch fork here. So that happens to work out really great. It gives you the proper clearance up on the top. And as you can see, the brake works quite nice. Now I mentioned this is a standard uh, unicycle hub and this is the uh, brake. I had to make little spacers to space this out away from the edge of the hub because of the spokes there. Uh, then we had to put a spacer in from here to the bearing. The bearing can't go all the way up there. We're going to have a spacer in between. So we make little collar spacers for that in there. Now the rear hub is a different story and mounting this axle and making a new hub and everything. I had to cut the uh, dropout off here and here and this, of course, the one from the other side. There it's cut, and there it's cut. And I put a little brace in between here, braze that in. And you can't see it, but in the back of the chainstay, I brazed in a piece of metal there and was able to drill and tap a couple of holes there. Now, the bracket, this is a unicycle uh, hub bracket, bearing bracket. I had to cut this actually off there and extend it probably about three quarters of an inch and then make the two holes longer so we get some adjustment back and forth like on the dropout you got to have adjustment for your chain about a half an inch of adjustment back and forth. Now this, this is a pulley to operate the clopping device we'll get to that shortly that's mounted onto the hub. And to create a completely new hub, here's a spoke flange and the axle that goes through there. What's different about this one, I had to put a Woodruff key hole, uh, slot in there to uh, mount the bearing. I don't have the bearing loose. It's in there assembled now. But the bearing looks like this bearing except it's got the slot in there for the key and it's a one-way bearing 
when you turn it one way, it'll it's loose, and when you go back the other way, it rotates the outside uh, bearing race. And that was critical to making this work. I'll show you that in a second. I'll get the camera on the other side here. But this took a little doing on this, and making this guy, and raising this piece on here, on both sides of course. This is a hub that isn't, an uh, axle that isn't finished. Uh, actually it's too short, I had to redo it. But you had to put the square ends on there and then drill and tap a hole for the crank. The crank fits on there. Oops, green side up. Okay, fits on there and just bolt it in. That works pretty nice. I use that on both front and back. Now notice this, uh, this is a pedal crank from a unicycle. I had to cut this, so it was probably about that long. And I'll show you a little calculation uh, system in a minute here. Now with a one-way bearing, you need a sprocket. So I had to make this sprocket. Uh, works great. It's copied from another one, but the hub design uh, for the bearing one-way bearing is totally different. Nothing like uh, this is available. I had to make it. Here's a view of the uh, hub with a one-way bearing. Now you're cranking forward and you back up. It's nice and free. Go forward. Nice and free. And the width of this hub is different from the width of the front hub. Therefore, it takes another set of spokes, different lengths. They're not compatible with one and the other. Here's my clopping device. Use a coconut cut in half and hollow it out. Mount it on the uh, arm here and support on the bottom. And it's operated by a cam. Now on this little cam, let me give this a close-up here. The cam has rollers on it instead of uh, just a solid uh, arm on there sticking out. It, uh, there's a lot of friction on here. I had to put a spring inside of here to keep pressure on the arm because uh, when this is going fast gravity is not enough. It needs pressure to hold it to, to keep it down. And let's back up here. The sprocket is a 36 tooth 6 inch diameter uh, sprocket and for the chain guard I use one from a 10 speed bike here instead of having a, a guard on it so that keeps the pants out of there. Works great. This is the horse body before it was uh, modified to fit onto the bike. Got the leg on the fixture now we're going to determine what our offset is going to be and this is fully extended right here. Fully extended is 17 and a quarter. All right, now we can't have it fully extended because this will go backwards. So we're going to have to back it up a little bit to 16 and a half. That seems pretty good there. If I hold it there, it won't go back. Now let's measure this here, 16 and a half. Got that. Put our piece of tape here. Okay, and let's see how much travel we can get here. I eventually ended up with a two inch offset. So that would give us four inches total travel. There's four inches right there. And I'll put this guy up there to see what that looks like. That's what it looks like riding on the horse. So this two inch offset is what we're going to use. Here's some of the details of the construction of the, the leg. This is the front leg on the uh, left side. Drill a hole and put a little bushing inside there so that the uh, the screw that holds it's not working on this plastic leg. And on the top, 
the, the dowel that went through there for the children's legs, uh, I cut that off. It happened to fit nicely in there, and that's a good pivot point. That's about equal to where it really should be. And uh, I determined the, the width here an inch and a half to give me the proper width on the, uh, the mounting bracket that goes on there. You'll see that in a minute. Now, needed a hinge here. What can we use for a hinge? Well, my good old urethane rubber. I form a, uh, f formed some there. I even got a color that's close to the, the horse color here. And that flexes any way you want. It's durable. And if it does wear out, it's very easy to replace. So that's what we have here. Show how the rear end is mounted on, on the uh, bike. One of my features was for shipping and transporting this, you've got to take the back end and the front end off. So I have a quick release system on here. There's three wing nuts. And if you can see this one in here, and there's two up inside, and that removes the whole thing. Let me get around on the other side, and I'll show you that coming off. The bracket, the brace, goes down to one of the bolts on the front of the uh, mounting for the uh, axle for the hub. That's the quick release. And here's the quick release for the front. Just slides right out. You can see the mechanism and the mounting business inside. And that red box is the sound box. Got a little button on the side here. That's the sound that was on the original uh, sound device on here. I edited it to get rid of the clopping sound because we have the, the clopper on the bike here. And showed you this before, the mounting business. There's two uh, hose clamps on there to hold it. And the rear one, when you tighten that, that's what keeps it in. Those are split so they clamp on the, the dowels to hold it in. Just slips right in. And you line it up. Goes right in. Tighten those two guys up and you're all set. Need a nut driver? It works great. Show you a little detail here on the sound box. I have a couple of rubber bands on there to stabilize it. And there's a plug on here. That's the uh, actuator switch so you can take this out. Comes out, set the horse down. And you can see what's inside here. That's a little amplifier recorder board I showed you. I added a larger speaker to get a little better sound as a paper cone compared to the plastic cone that was on the other one. 